Welcome back, beautiful and amazing human beings. And in this particular video, we will be getting into the next trajectory for American foreign policy, as well as the next inevitable clash that will happen between Iran and the United States. There's a lot of important details to follow, a lot of speculation, but we're going to get through all of it with the most important news for today. And we do this because unlike the soulless, corporate, idiotic, little, pathetic scoundrels at the mainstream media that will do anything for a buck and will comply with, of course, the military industrial complex, hundreds of millions of dollars for propaganda. Well, well, we don't do that because we're financed by uh, shirts <laughs> and hats, which you could purchase on our store, which will be linked directly below. And with these purchases, you help us counter the multi-million dollar military industrial complex propaganda machine, which uh, relatively speaking, uh, we're doing amazing, especially with the resources we have getting the word out there and having people critically think about important issues and there really couldn't be more of an important issue than the events unfolding in the middle east which seems to have died down but essentially will continue to escalate from here and from my assessment will for sure reach another dangerous escalation coming up this spring now we're getting a lot of interesting speculations especially ones coming from the wall street journal from their anonymous sources that are now claiming that Trump committed this assassination on this Iranian general, this very big move that many people see as very ill-advised, that allegedly, according to the Wall Street Journal and their anonymous source, was committed because Donald Trump wanted to appease GOP senators before his impeachment trial laying out a scenario that again is based off anonymous sources but is it's not that far-fetched especially if you look at the contributing details and facts behind this on how it was u.s senator lindsey graham who was one of the few representatives that was actually briefed on this assassination israel was also briefed but other than that the information was very tight Lip. Now, as we know, Lindsey Graham is a war hawk, bloodthirsty neocon who has criticized the president beforehand, and, and he also has a lot of sway in the Senate, which the impeachment proceedings will be going towards whenever Nancy Pelosi releases the impeachment articles to the Senate. She's holding on to them now. Allegedly, she's going to be releasing them next week. But this is a scenario that I think is actually worth considering here as as according to the journal that trump felt under pressure from the senate now whether that made him commit this large geopolitical blunder and assassination that's still unknown but for sure there is a lot of pressure from a lot of neocons that are representatives of our government who are pushing for this kind of crazy foreign policy that we have been seeing demonstrated by our president who who once again is is telling us that this act needed to be done to prevent an imminent planned bombing of the u.s embassy in iraq now that story is again being contradicted by trump and his administration it's and it's important to note here the underlining probabilities of what actually was happening here because again the official story does not add up and there is no evidence proving that the government needed to do this because of an imminent threat to american life now u.s secretary of state is saying that it was a quote large-scale attack against u.s facilities but again not providing any details changing the story from u.s embassy in baghdad to now quote u.s facilities he also talked about how the u.s had no idea where and when this supposed imminent attack that would kill americans would happen which which again is a direct contradiction from everything we've been hearing from this administration everything we've been hearing from the pentagon everything we've been hearing from the, the alleged deep state intelligence reports which again have been always proven to manipulate information to try to cause war 
Now, allegedly, the representatives of our government were briefed about this imminent embassy attack in Baghdad. But according to Bernie Sanders, who was at one of these intelligence briefings, that was not the case at all. And according to him, not one word of that was mentioned. Donald Trump also contradicted himself just moments ago during his speech talking about multiple embassies being possibly attacked here by these Iranian generals. When again, the official story is just crumbling and we haven't seen one shred of evidence providing that this needed to be done. And again, I will no way believe intelligence reports that have proven to be lies beforehand that caused massive war and destructions based off those lies. And this is why I think the House resolution that just passed that is going to be supported by Mike Lee and U.S. Senator Rand Paul to limit the war powers resolution against this U.S. executive presidency is a good idea. A lot of MAGA people are, are really mad about that for some reason, but I think determining if this country goes to war should be determined by more than one person who, as proven with this incident and other incidents, is capable of lying. The man has already bombed Syria twice. So yes, this is an important resolution because his actions are appeasing and helping the true groups that do commit Western terrorism Groups like ISIS, which, by the way, the fight against has been postponed since, of course, this latest assassination. ISIS, by the way, is, is very happy with the death of this Iranian general that has been accredited with wiping them out in the Middle East. And there is an ISIS group that is calling this, quote, divine intervention that will help them regroup in Iraq, which is essentially going to be happening here. Again, this is literally coming out in ISIS newspapers that are celebrating of Donald Trump's latest moves. And, and again, people need to under, understand here, the United States is on the side of Islamist, Sunni, Wahhabist, as we're also finding out that the United States unsuccessfully also targeted another Iranian military official on the same day as the main assassination in Iraq, but this time targeting the Iranian commander in Yemen, where he is fighting against US-led coalition with Saudi Arabia that is also fighting with Al-Qaeda. Yes, once again, the war is continuing and escalating, and there is a freaking war. A lot of people are saying, there's no war, there's nothing going on. I absolutely don't understand people's total acceptance and, and, and putting up these blinders that don't let them see the military actions that are continuing, that are going to escalate from here. That prop up Wahhabist, Sunni, Al-Qaeda, ISIS that will commit more Western terrorism. This is idiotic, unstrategic, hurtful foreign policy that will, will hurt American citizens. This is stupid what Donald Trump is doing, and it makes no sense at all for the average American. It makes a lot of sense for uh, neocon military industrial complex warhawk bootlickers who want destruction. Yeah, it makes perfect sense for them since, again, this will again escalate before the spring especially with the latest announcement from the Pentagon that they are going to be keeping troops in Iraq despite not only protests, but despite the Iraqi government voting them to leave. The United States military just drafted a letter by its top commanders that reads like it came out of 1984's Orwell that again absolutely makes no sense and only makes American soldiers targets in the region. The official statement also mentioned that they won't be bombing any cultural sites filled with civilians, which yeah, um, is a pretty egregious thing to say. And now Iraq sensing and knowing that it will be the next battlefield as a proxy war between Iranian and American forces is, is, is obviously not happy. Lots of Iraqi government officials are not happy about this since, of course, they and their civilians will be paying the price soon, which has left many Iraqi leaders saying, hey, hey, can you please at least try to leave 
I mean, we voted you out, but can you please at least try to, quote, lay down the mechanics to please leave, which uh, the United States government is like, ah, we didn't hear that. Did, did you guys hear? Did you guys hear something? Did, did, did someone say something? Nope. As, of course, Donald Trump threatened major economic sanctions and demanded that Iraq pay for a major military installation that they never asked for. But yet again, the troops will be there. There's more troops heading there to that specific region right now, which will only make them more targets. As, of course, the proxy war between Iran and the United States is continuing. It's been going on for years. We've been reporting on it for years. And now it's just reaching another stepping stone with the United States declaring more economic warfare on Iran with economic sanctions that, of course, attack almost virtually the entire Iranian economy, which will make the people of Iran predominantly suffer. The Iranian government and government officials usually will find a way out of it. And again, the whole strategy of sanctions is to push a population into despair so they protest and overthrow the government. We have seen that policy used in places like Venezuela, which it hasn't worked, Cuba, which it hasn't worked, and many other countries, which, again, just create human suffering as a result of. And to, to me, the, these sanctions are only going to further probability of this escalation that will happen. Israel, of course, is getting involved just moments ago, conducting airstrikes against Iranian-backed militants on the Iraqi and Syrian border as they were fighting ISIS. Once again, ISIS is directly benefiting from U.S., Saudi Arabian and Israeli actions, as of course their involvement of this only makes retaliation more possible, only makes the world more unsafe, only will create more global jihad on the world stage as they are decisively taking a stance against the Iranians and not ISIS, which they have supported, backed, armed, trained, funded before. And again, with, with more airstrikes, with more deaths. How can there not be a further explosion of the powder keg that is the Middle East that is set on a pathway of war that will, of course, involve not just Iran and the United States, but also, of course, Iranian allies like China that is financing Iran and, of course, Russia that has close geopolitical, military, and strategic ties to that country as well. And, and again, the tensions are high here as newly released videos show Russian warships aggressively approaching U.S. warships in the Arabian Sea. And, and again, as I've stated in yesterday's videos, all it takes is a mistake. All it takes is an accident to happen that will lead to a devastating retaliation, a devastating attack that sadly will cost human lives and is absolutely pointless and worthless and doesn't need to happen. Now, it's important to note here that there are Iraqi officials that don't want just the United States out of Iraq, but also want Iranian forces out of Iraq. Since again, they see the groundwork the explosions, the dynamite being planted for a very explosive situation, which they don't want to be in the middle of. But with the United States' latest actions, with Israel's more aggressive actions, with Irene, Iran being as hard-headed as they are, that it's inevitable. It's inevitable. That, that, the, the fight's going to happen. And there's no denying that. And there's, of course, this latest controversy with this Ukrainian airliner, which now allegedly Iran is cooperating with. There's even footage of a bulldozer being seen at the flight wreckage. And until we get the black box, until we get more information, I don't think it's worth definitively deciding what happened here since we are still waiting to get all the details. But as of right now, the US, Ukraine, France, and Canada 
have been invited to examine the crash site. There's other people talking about the possibility of this attack being an act of terrorism by another group or an act of sabotage, which again could all be possible here, but we still have to wait for all the information to come out. But this event, once again, shows you how the real cost of, of all of this is and it sent civilians who were caught up in the middle. Regardless of the truth here, what happened is an absolute travesty. The loss of life should be prevented at all costs. Preventing us to getting into war should be worked at no matter what your political allegiance is. Get rid of any blindfold or hat or stupid ideology that takes away the most important act of critical thinking and preserving our existence on this planet. Again, human history is filled. It's riddled with war. It's very uncommon for humans not to be at war. So we should do everything to try to preserve that at all costs. Peace should always be the answer. This is our philosophy. This is our belief. This is why we are here as independent media raising this important voice that sadly, predominantly, you do not see at all on the mainstream media. If you thought we achieved that, share this video with your friends and family members. Your support, you sharing, you voting with your clicks, you voting with your dollars is more important than ever. And for the individuals that do, you allow me to do this job for you. And because of that, I love you guys. Thank you again so much for watching. Stay tuned for more here on wearechange.org.